So I just realized when I made the recent videos on masculine and feminine energy in the Relationship Astrology series, I forgot to really prepare the subject as well as I should have. So I'm going to make this video, I'm going to make a couple videos to really explain masculine and feminine energy astrologically first so that it makes more sense once I start talking about masculine and feminine energy, men and women in relationships. So first, you want to understand that these are universal principles. It's not my opinion that masculine and feminine energy is a certain way. These are based on every energetic system the world has ever known. And that doesn't just include Vedic or Mayan, but it also includes Greek and everything else. We have the four elements in Western alchemy, and in Vedic alchemy we have five elements, which includes something that's not charged by gender. So the elements have gender, and the first relationship to the elements that we all have, or I'm sorry, the first relationship we have to gender, identity, and reality is through the elements. Now we all have both genders in us. Man is not 100% man, it's like 51% man, 49% woman, and vice versa. And we can really understand the nature of these, of, of these genders by understanding the nature of the elements. So the elements, they emanate from gross to subtle. And again, these aren't just, this isn't just airy-fairy woo-woo stuff. This is how life is created. It's created from five elements, but the four gross elements are earth, water, fire, and air. And there are two feminine and two masculine elements. The first two elements are feminine, which is earth and water. Earth is the most solid and, and the heaviest element, followed by water, which is the next, you know, water sets on earth. And then water and earth together make plants that we burn to make fire. And then fire disperses into air, which also blows and moves as the wind. And then air disperses into space, which is the fifth element, and that's related to pure consciousness that doesn't have a gender. So earth and water are feminine, fire and air are masculine elements. Again, we all have all five elements in us. Men also have a lot of feminine energy, women also have a lot of masculine energy, and it comes from the elements, like everything comes from the elements, what are called the Pancha Mahabhutas, the five major elements. And again, these aren't just, this isn't just physical New Age mumbo jumbo. Fire isn't just a physical element, it creates an emotional feeling and, 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 a spirit, and also has a spiritual outcome, just like, you know, just like water. When you're in water, water affects your body, but it also affects your mind and consciousness. Just like earth, just like, you know, wind. You know, when the wind is blowing on you, you feel it. It also affects your mind a certain way and also affects your, uh, your um, spirit and consciousness. So, what we can understand about feminine energy in both men and women, we understand from earth and water. Feminine energy, first is the capacity to stabilize, which is earth. Earth is to stabilize and to sensitize, which is water. Stabilize and sensitize. Those are the two main qualities of feminine energy in both men and women. Men have a quality of wanting to be stable in their life and in their mind and in their heart and to be sensitive to their environment. So through things like family, love, connection, food, our physical body, these are these are qualities of feminine energy. Remember, it's in both men and women. So don't say, well, men, men are also this or that, or women are also this. Men and women have all five elements. So the qualities of feminine energy are, are the capacity to sensitize, the senses flow into our environment, and stabilize. This is what feminine energy does. Sensitize and stabilize. Feminine energy is internal, psychological, emotional where things come into us. The world comes into us and creates a feeling and we want to then stabilize and feel stable and solid. But it's not just about being sensitized and stable. There's also about growth and expansion externally. And of course there's an internal expansion through feminine energy and an internal stability also through feminine energy. It's not just physical. These are psychological realities as well when we identify with just being a physical body, then sensitivity and, st and stability become just about 
physicality. As we become more spiritual, we want to be sensitive to everything and become more stable spiritually. So these are deep principles that go as deep as we're able to understand. So feminine energy is the capacity to sensitize and stabilize. Masculine energy then is fire and air. So again, earth and water creates plants. This isn't just an astrologer being weird. Earth and water create plants. And then the plants we can burn. That creates fire. But again, there has to be an alchemy. There has to be an alchemy to create the fire and then the fire disperses in the air. So masculine energy is related to fire and air. Fire gives clarity, movement. Again, it's not just me making things up. When it's dark in the middle of the night, which is feminine, you don't know where you're going. You could turn on the light, but turning on the light is introducing light, fire. Once the sun comes up and we have light, we also have focus and direction and external drive and focus. We don't have an external drive when it's really dark. We just want to lay around and be still and internal and, and quiet. Light introduces movement. It, it, I should say fire introduces light, which brings about movement, drive, consistency, delineation, and also intellect, intelligence, discrimination, higher thinking, to understand. So masculine energy is the, is, is the capacity to act and to discriminate, to comprehend and assert. Now that I have light, I see what I need to do and I need to go get it. Again, women have masculine energy too. This is the thing to understand about these principles. Everyone has both masculine and feminine energy in them. In relationship, however, and as a matter of identity, women identify as a matter of identity with their feminine traits much more than their masculine traits as a matter of identity. Women generally, and I'm being general, and you can say, what about gay relationships and all? All of those things still apply, but they're just more subtle and complex. But in general, in a general sense, women identify as a matter of self with their feminine characteristics more than their masculine. For instance, even if a woman is a go-getter, successful career person, that's, she'll enjoy that. But as a matter of identity, she's going to identify herself more through her capacity to receive, feel, and integrate. To sensitize and stabilize. Even though she's got a great career, usually she's going to identify herself more as, as the member of a family, as this and that, and what have you. As a matter of identity, women bond more with their feminine traits, and in relationship especially, that's where they come to experience themselves as a gender being. That's what they're trying to do, just like men. They tend to identify more with themselves and their masculine traits, what they accomplish, their goals, how they're able to you know, handle their responsibilities and duties. In general, men identify within themselves and they would like to see themselves more as a matter of identity with those things, with their career, the things they accomplish, the things they're strong enough to you know, take on their battles, the, you know, the capacity to stay the course even when they get upset. Whereas women, for instance, identify more with the capacity to adjust and make sure that they're in flow with their heart. And men are like, well, whether I feel like it or not, I want to meet my duties and accomplishments. Things of that nature. So in a general sense, men are going to identify more with their masculine side. And in relationships, and this is ancient wisdom, men are going to identify and try to identify more with their masculine traits. And relationships work best when the man feels that his masculine integrity is intact and the woman feels like her feminine integrity is intact. Once that's intact, then we try to relax into the opposite. A man tries to come experience himself through his feminine side by the woman. A woman tries to experience her masculine side through the man. But we need to be established in our gender identity first and it comes from the elements. Two feminine, two masculine elements, that's the origin of masculine and feminine um, through Eastern and Western alchemy.